So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Well, yeah, go ahead. You were talk talking first. What were you saying? Okay. Um, okay. You go, man. <laughs> There's plenty of time. Yeah, well, um, I'm not sure who was talking first, but... Uh, my, my question was, uh, what, what are you planning to paint right now? Do you have an idea or are you just exploring uh, anything? Uh, no, I don't have any ideas at the moment. Oh, you know what, though? I'm trying to practice more of painting with a certain process, so I'm going to do that. And it involves me using more color. Um, ooh. Okay. But yeah, I don't have any... Like, usually whenever I do these demos, I just kind of just paint. And just like, kind of follow my, my instincts a bit. But yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, I have a question about time management. Um, yeah, go for it. Yeah, I think I, because uh, yeah, like all everything is very important. But I think uh, I'm. I wanted to know like because you know I, I've I've seen I've seen your work and stuff and 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 like when you've been uh, live streaming and you talk about like you work out you also paint but you're you're always you know on it and uh, uh -huh. I'm finding it like very difficult to. Uh, like have a like a healthy life and paint. Uh, I don't know if that's very important for everybody, but that's I, for me. It's like super. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. like being able to like, how do you manage a day for yourself? Like you have kids and all, and you can, can you like also like you can work out and paint and and do everything. Like how how difficult is that, or how how do you do that? Uh, you just gotta like I'm not. I wouldn't say perfect either, but you just got to have priorities. And then you just kind of try to live up to those priorities. And so, for instance, um, you know, I, I prefer to, like, you know, hang out with my children, my children. And so whenever I'm at my desk and I have an option to work or or like I have a, I have some time and I'm like, okay, what should I do? Uh, I usually ask myself like what the kids are doing and what if I can do with the kids. And and one one thing that I've done, because, you know, in the beginning, you know, I used to work a lot. You know, I used to work often. And there was always this goal of, well, I'll work hard now so that in the future I don't have to work as hard. Yeah. Right? And I'm just like, oh, I'll just keep working hard and then eventually I'll just get somewhere where I don't have to work as hard. And that's true at some, at some extent, but the reality was um, I was already in a position where I didn't need to work as hard, and but yet I was still working hard, and I couldn't figure out like why this was the case. And I realized it's just because, uh, although I may have said my priorities were other things, for instance, I say, you know, my priorities are family and friends and stuff like that, um, the reality was my priority was just working and working a lot. And when I started to realize this, then that's when I started to change my whole perspective and said, no, I, I should be working less already. And I need to start getting in the habit of that. Yeah. You know? And yeah. and all I did was just start doing it. I just started, like, for, like, everything that you do, you just got to assume it's going to take time and effort, even working less. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's pretty much what happened. I just started to work less and less and less. And, you know, working out, um, working out is not as, like, that. that's actually not very difficult to add to your day. Like, you only really need to do is start, like, with 15, 20 minutes of working out and then just add 10 to 15 minutes every, every so often. And then eventually you'll do yeah. it for about an hour, which is a good amount of time of working out. And if you think about it, an hour is not a lot of time in your day no, yeah and so it's like we're yeah like exercising is actually not a big deal and if you guys are having a hard time exercising 
uh, like you want to you want to do it. You want to get like it's good. It's actually if you want to be as best as you possibly can be, you should exercise because it sharpens your brain, right? And so you just like yeah, just like do jumping jacks for like five minutes. You know, do like a hundred jumping jacks. Start off with that, and then or or squats. Do like some stuff that are easy. You know, like you can do at your desk, like push ups, squats. Um, Jumping jacks, get like a jump rope or something, do some jump ropes, you know? Yeah, I was thinking about that, like buying stuff, because that's, that's my main uh But you, you don't need to buy stuff, too, either, right? Like, let me kind of stop you there. Like, just, just yeah, like, I gave you uh, examples of, like, just body weight, right? Like, just do something, right? Yeah, okay. A lot of the problem is what you're, like, that you're, that you're stemming is that, it has to be perfect. Like the scenario has to be set up in such a way before you can get, get, get started, right? And the real the real problem to that thinking is no, you should just get started. Like today, like right after class, just do like a hundred jumping jacks. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you could do that. That'll take you no more than ten minutes. You know, uh, do like uh, thirty or forty push-ups right after that. You know, and then that'd be it. That's all you need to do. And if you don't work out often, like those push-ups and those jumping jacks are going to screw you over, man. You're going to feel sore just just from doing a small yeah. amount of working out, right? I remember when yeah, I yeah. after my surgery, I was like, because I couldn't really work out because I was just always in pain before. But then after the surgery, I started feeling good. So I started walking. I started walking 15 to 20 minutes every day. And then eventually I started walking two to three miles every day. And then eventually three to four miles, right? And then once I started run, walking three to four miles, I was like, okay, maybe I can work out a little bit. So I started working out, you know, yeah. like a little bit more yeah, aggressively. Yeah, it makes sense, man. Uh, it's just I was just not doing it. I don't know. And, yeah. And I know it's healthy, and I used to do it, and and that's why, I, I don't know, because I just want to know somebody that works a lot that if you're if you're able to do it, because some I know a lot of people – I mean, some artists that, you know, they're very successful and so on, but, like, physically, like, it's not good for your mind, I think, eventually, in the future, if you're not healthy. Uh, I just, I want to find a balance between that, and I, you know, that's why I was asking that. Yeah, and um, a lot of the reason why you don't do the things that you, you want to do is because of what I just said. Um, you're, you're waiting for a perfect scenario. You're waiting for all the planets to align. But the planets won't. The planets won't align. Is what I'm trying to tell you. Like, yeah. you just gotta just do it. I mean, sometimes the planets do align. Let me rephrase that. But relying on that is 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 unnecessary. Okay, it's kind of the point I'm trying to make. You know, you. Yeah, no, it makes sense, man. You're right. Yeah, you wanna you wanna just get started, and it's the same thing with art. Like a lot of people are like, I mean, you know, I feel like my anatomy is like really bad, and like, well, start practicing anatomy. Or, well, how should I yeah. go about it? Just start. Just starting. Mm-hmm. You know, that is the the biggest downfall to most people's growth is they don't they don't get started. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. a lot of times uh, I have a lot of friends who are now considering you know plant based diet because that's what I do, and they're like they see the benefits of it. You know, everybody understand. Everybody already knows that you should eat more fruits and vegetables anyway, right? And so they're like, okay, well, when I start doing this, like, what can I do? And it's like, just start simple, you know, just start making smoothies or something. You know, don't do, do something really easy, you know. It's really easy to get like a pineapple, but banana, mango smoothie, and you can just throw like a handful of spinach in there, and then bam, you got like a a huge serving of fruits and vegetables in just one, like, drink. And you, you start know? feeling better. Like it changes your life, man. It really does. Yeah, um, and then that's my point. Like you just get started. Just get started. And then, and then you'll be like, oh, that's easy. What else is there? What else can I do? It's like, well, you know, try to uh, eliminate the, the amount of meat you have in a day, right? Like a lot of people eat way too much meat, and uh, especially here in America. And I usually suggest to them, you know, just just take, like, instead of eating it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, why don't you just eat it for dinner, right? And then for breakfast, try to find alternatives like cereals, oatmeal, you know? Uh, and then for lunch, try to eat like a big salad with some beans, you know. Yeah, yeah. For dinner, you can have whatever the hell you want, right? Eat whatever you're used to eating. 
Yeah, I, where, I, where I come from, like, well, Jesus is from, from Venezuela as well. We're, we're oh, okay. both Venezuelans. And uh, I think he would, he would know that, like, it's crazy because I think it's like America or more, like, the, the level of meat yeah, eating it's there. Intense. It's abnormal. It's yeah, it's, it's too much. And it's because of uh, good things, because we have modern technology, like refrigeration and transportation. Like, you know, we have the ability to transport, you know, exotic foods all around the yeah. world. Um, and the more wealthy a country becomes, the more access they have to this. But it doesn't mean it's any good for you, right? And so, like, even think of it like this. Even a lion, like, eats once a week, <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. It's like, and so like, if you are eating more than an animal that's built and designed to, to murder and slay other animals and eat them, right? And they don't even yeah. eat as much as you do. Like, you should consider maybe that's not a good uh, alternative. But you know, not getting too deep into that. The point I'm trying to make is, you know, like with, yeah. even with that, like a lot of my friends were just like, "How do you? How do you?" Like they're waiting. They're like, well, I'm wait, I'm gonna wait for this day, or I'm gonna wait till this month, or I'm gonna wait till this moment. And I'm like, just do it, you know, just get started, even if it's a little bit, right? You know, there's also there's also something to be said for the fact that like the lion has to, you know, like sprint and like tackle and like <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> exercise to get its point. point. You know, we just sit there and like absolutely. put it in the microwave. No, you're something. right. You're absolutely right. Like you know, like a, a lot of my friends who would argue against me a lot of times would be like, well, you know, you know, back in the day, you know, tribes used to hunt and and you know eat animals, and I'm like, yeah. Like they used to hunt, like uh, yeah. I saw like a human planet where these these tribe people would literally like chase down a wild ox for like hours, you know, mm -hmm. hours. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm like, yeah. So they're they're getting their cardio in, bro. <laughs> you know, like what did you do for that? You, know, you just went to Ralph's, right? And then you just <laughs> bought like a gallon worth of you know produce. It's like, dude. We got it pretty yeah. easy. And so, and because of that ease, um, you know, it comes with a lot of detrimental health issues. That's why, that's why if you look at the conundrum that we have in the States, this is what made me change my diet, especially after my tumor really com compounded this. Um, like, if you really consider, um, like, the, the real situation that's happening of, we have more money invested in healthcare and uh, fitness like th there's more ways to get fit in this world or in america but yet people are still getting obese and there's more ways to stay healthy and there's a lot more drugs right but yet we're dying more and more right and we're getting sicker younger and younger there was a time where diabetes was only a, a, a an adult thing like only adults got diabetes but now kids are getting yeah. diabetes so it's like okay you know, we should take a really good look at what's going on. And that's kind of like I, I convince my friends with, and that's why they're all like, oh, yeah, let me really consider it, you know. And uh, and I, I tell everybody with anything you want to improve upon, like let's get back on kind of the topic, right, it, going back to like working out or even time management or uh, having a healthier diet or even having a more practical like art schedule all begins with a simple adjustment. Not with a major one, a simple, small, but manageable adjustment, and you just keep doing that throughout a, a period of time, and eventually, the next thing you know, you will be doing it often. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because if you if you want it to be excellent right away, you're you're gonna fail much easier. Let me give you guys an example. Okay. Let me let me let me illustrate this. So if you were to look at two lists. Okay, list one and list two. Okay, and list one is saying you're going to wake up at 8 a.m. Normally you wake up at 9 or even 10 a.m. You're going to start waking up at 8 a.m. I mean, most of you guys did that because you're taking my class. Some of you guys aren't because you're in different countries, but you get my point. That's it. That is all list one is saying. That is the only change you're making uh, starting today, okay, or starting tomorrow. Uh, starting tomorrow, you have another list. You're like, no, you know what? I'm going to wake up 8 a.m. I'm going to go work out at 9. I'm going to do some real good work at 10, you know? Um, and then I'm going to go to lunch around 12.30. I'm going to make my own lunch at 
you know, at like two, I'm going to get back to work, you know, and at three or at four or five, you know, I'm going to go for a walk and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Until you go to sleep, right? So which list is the list that you should do? Now, I already kind of gave you guys the answer before I showed you this, right? But if I didn't give you the answer, commonly what happens is people say, well, list two is obviously the thing you should do, right? Yeah. List one, right? <laughs> and it's actually list one. Because list two, you'll do it for like a week or two, or even a month maybe, but then you fall then you off. Yeah, then you burn out and you fall off, right? Cause it's, and then you also you, you get discouraged, right? Because you're not yeah. you're and just you, missing you, more you stuff. feel you feel more like a failure, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Like, it happens to me, so I'm like, damn, man, I'm trying, but yeah. Well, you know, it is because yeah. list one is the more practical thing. Just change one thing. Just wake up earlier, and then just do that, right? And live the rest of your day the normal. But maybe you're like, man, I have an extra hour now. You know what? I'm gonna make breakfast a little bit earlier. You know, you're gonna find something a little bit different throughout the whole day and you're like, you know what and you do that for like a week right you do it until you feel like you're consistently doing it yeah and then you're like, all right great i'm like waking up early like if you miss a day or two it's no big deal but once you start to feel like it's pretty much a habit now right then you can be like yeah. well i'm gonna start making my own breakfast you know and then i'm gonna start working at 10 and then i'm gonna do this and then i'm gonna do that you know what i mean you then you start to add things but instead of this lasting for a month and then falling off, this will last years, and you'll stay consistent. You guess, you guess what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And let I, me I, let me give you a real life example of a, a business model that takes advantage of people's um, lack of of commitment. Their over ambitions, their over ambition, and a lack of commitment. Which is back into the health thing, workout, like like uh, workout programs, like P90X. In 90 days, you'll be the, the most fit you'll ever be, right? It's super intense workout. The first week or two is some of the most intense workouts you'll ever do, right? It's like crazy. And it works. You'll start losing weight and you start gaining strength. You know, you start feeling good. But it's so hard, right? And after like week three or week four, you start falling off dramatically, okay? This is most people. Not all people. Some people stick to it, right? And usually in those situations, people there's two really there's two reasons why people might not fall off as easily. Is one they may have like a dramatic thing happen to them, like their health really is bad and they're probably going to die if they don't make a change, right? Something dramatic along those lines. Or two, they already had a lifestyle that was built to accommodate this, you know. Uh, but for the rest of us, you know, if you don't have those two circumstances, right, uh, then it becomes much harder to maintain and then you fall off and they, they do this great thing is like if you don't like it in 30 days you know we'll give you a full refund but here's the thing they actually know you're going to give up in those 30 days you know yeah. and then they know that also so you're the kind of person that's not going to put in the work to get the refund get it yeah the the and, other thing, the other thing about those programs too is that, uh, like, the you know, the way that they advertise it is like they show the results of like this is what this yeah. guy did in like two weeks. But the thing that they're not telling you is that the people that they use for that are like basically professional athletes who are in like ridiculous shape and like that's their there's standard. A, there's a lot of very yeah. Yeah, they'll have those people like they'll be like okay like eat bad and stop working out and for like, you know, a month or whatever. And so they have those people like get uh -huh. out of shape and then they'll have them do like the workout sure. to get just back to their, like their like body. Yeah, I, I heard about that easy. actually. Yeah. I heard about that. And yeah. Also, I heard the opposite where they would, you would, they would take pictures of them already fit and then they would take pictures of them after right, right. getting out of shape. So the before and after actually swapped. That makes sense. Yeah, that, they, they, well, yeah it's really all, deceiving, all... but that's not the point, right? <laughs> like the, the advertisement is a whole different issue. I understand and I agree, but the real point here is that people still believe that this is a thing. Like regardless, like subconsciously built into most of us 
we believe that you know we got to do everything amazingly right off the bat and that's a social thing that we've been kind of conditioned to believe to be true but the reality uh, is slow and steady rims the race is one of the best strategies you can apply to everything and anything you want to improve upon okay meaning that if you want to get better at your time management then you have to make a minor change you know over a longer period of time instead of lots of changes in a short period of time okay um we're we've been trained to be impatient and as your mentor i'm trying to train you guys to be patient because being patient is a much more valuable tool okay having patience and having resilience will give you a lot, will reap you tons and tons of rewards, okay, in the future. All right? It really does. And um, what, one, of, one of the things, too, is about the, uh, like, you know, gyms. Like, for instance, like, I believe there was, like, a LA Fitness uh, here, in this, here in California. We have LA Fitness. I'm not sure if there's anywhere else. But it's basically just, like, a gym. You go to like a gym where you pay twenty five dollars a month for gym membership. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a twenty four hour fitness or anything like that. Typical. And and so like you know every place has it mostly or something like this. And what happens is like you know they have a building that can have a capacity of like a thousand people. And I think the one in L A. Like this is the truth. Like it's about it can if a thousand people there, it's starting to get to capacity. Okay. But the, the membership that they have at that one gym is like an, in the 10,000. Meaning mm -hmm. that the 9,000 people, which let's be clear, like it, it has a capacity for 1,000, but maybe at, at any given time, there's only like 100, maybe 200 people there. Yeah, they know that the people are not going to be there. Not even, a, I wouldn't even say 200, like definitely 100, right? At any given time, there's like about 100 people at the gym at that time, right? With a capacity of 1,000, right? But there's 10,000 there, like I saw this, and there's like 10,000 people who are signed up to that one gym, not to the overall gym or all around the California, to that one gym that's found on that one street. You know what I mean? Yeah. Meaning that if everybody decided to go work out that one day, yeah. it, they would, it would be a complete disaster. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is how they they make tons of money, right? Like they make tons of money because people are like New Year's are rolling around, and they have a huge flux of people sign up, right? And yeah. and a lot of people do show up. Like New Year's is usually where you see a lot of people show up more than you would expect. You know, oh yeah, look at all these people, and then and then it starts to die back down and usually averages out in the rest of the year. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and and all these people. So although the attendance is is much lower. The, the amount of people signing up is actually increasing. It makes sense? And people who don't cancel, including myself, actually. I still think I have LA Fitness, and I haven't been there for literally a year. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, God damn it. You know, and so it's like, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's basically that business model is built around people with this mentality, meaning I need to do, I need to wait for everything to line up. New Year's is coming around. This is the year that I'm going to turn it all around. Like if, if there was no time, there was no sun going up and down and there was no calendar days and months, then when would you, when would you figure it would be a good day to start? Yeah. Right. And that's what you should think about. It. It's like, well, yeah, why can't I just start doing pushups like right now? Like what, well, what am I doing right now? That's preventing me from just doing a simple exercise. What right now is preventing me from just eating a little bit better? What, what, what's preventing me? from just drawing a little bit longer, you know? Yeah. And yeah. and if nothing's there, then say, okay, well, I'll make a minor change. And the key word is minor, right? That's the greatest advice I can give you guys is minor change, not major change. Major change gradually happens, right? A lot of times people see like this big pile of stones, okay? And here's one of, here's you, and you're just like, oh man, like these are all the things I need to learn, Jesus, you know? And then you're like, okay, well AJ said minor change, right? So you go here and you grab one stone, that's one minor change, right? You turn around and you add it to your growth, right? Like the knowledge that you've acquired. 
Oops, I keep. There you go. All right, and you just do it again. You go back and forth, right? Before this pile starts to collect. You know what I mean? And then years later, guess what? The amount of stuff that you want to learn is now, there's very little things that you feel like you can learn, at least in this category of things that you've tried to perfect or master, right? And you've become a master at whatever it is that you were trying to become a master. But over years, right? Not days, not like 30 days you'll become a master. No, years, right? And it'll be gradual. And more importantly, you created one of the most valuable tools to your arsenal is the, the strength of patience and the strength of resilience. Meaning that anything else that you want to become good at, you have no problems at getting good at it. Right? And then later, like five years or six years from now, when people ask, like, man, how come you're so good at this thing? You know, oh, I've just been doing it for five or six years. I love when people come up to me and they're like, oh, man, I can never do that thing in a million years. And I'm like, like, like they look at my art and they're like, man, it took like a million years to do whatever you're doing, right? I'll be like, no, really, probably 10. It took me 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> it took you, it'll probably take you 10 years too, maybe faster, because the internet and stuff is better nowadays than it was for me. Right? Yeah, yeah. They just they just want it. They don't want it to. They don't want it to take year like a few years. They want it to take like a few months, and it's that's very short sighted. Is what I'm trying to say. I think. Um. I think. I think that what you're saying has like a lot of It'll value. Uh, Sorry, my daughter. And I, I also think um, one of the one of the problems that is not necessarily talked about or one of like I shouldn't say problem I guess one of like the side effects of just like the way that everything works nowadays with like social media and stuff is that like you like I think that for some people like social media can almost be like like a sickness in their life and the only reason I say that is because like you know you have some people that look at everything that their friends are posting uh, all the time and they're like oh man like this person's like going out for like a fancy dinner and like why am i not doing that and then they look at like <laughs> another friend and they're like this person's on vacation why am i not doing that and like it starts to compound where like you start some people start feeling like why is everyone's life so much better than mine but sure. the thing they're not taking into account is that they're posting like the best thing that's happening to them at that moment yeah. And not the stuff that's like normal, yeah, you know. Yeah. And so, it's the same way with like with everything where you look at like you know, there this guy's like a fitness guy. Like, why is he in super good shape and I'm not? It's because that guy's a fitness guy and like you're yes. not like a bodybuilder professionally. So yeah. we're just bombarded with all of this information now nowadays sure. that's saying like this guy's life is like this and yours isn't, but they're not they're not having the same goals that you are you know yeah ironically the industry we work for i think caters to this mentality right like movies movies like yeah. paint a different picture than reality a lot of times you yeah know? and so yeah i agree yeah i, I hear you 100 percent. i um i love i love technology and i love the internet and i think you're right and i tell people this too and I tell them, you know, let me give you guys a good piece of advice, too, about how to use the Internet. If you guys weren't sure how to use it before, let me tell you how, <laughs> okay? Uh, especially, like, sites like Google and YouTube, uh, you know, they pay attention to what you're looking at, okay? Yeah, yeah. So if you want, like, I had a student once talk to me, like, you know, like, I, I feel like every time I go to YouTube, it just keeps distracting me. It keeps, like, giving me videos and stuff that... I don't really want to watch, and there's just like all this stuff that just keeps me distracted. And I, I stopped them, and I was like, "Look, YouTube, like you saying it's not showing you things you don't want to watch, right? Is is a lie. Like they're totally trying to show you things that you want to watch. It is yeah. you who is the one that's distracting yourself. It's like you need to stop looking at those types of things, right?" Um, let me let me try to like guess what YouTube would tell me right now that I would want to watch. 
um it'll probably talk about like vegan stuff plant-based things right what else um i watched a few pewdiepie videos and some overwatch videos recently <laughs> and sometimes every so often i'll watch ted and vsauce right so that this is like the last few days right that i think the things that have been catching my attention okay so let, let's investigate let's see what youtube offers <laughs> So Overwatch, vegan, PewDiePie, Vsauce. <laughs> you yeah, know? That's, yeah, and no, I, no, I, I didn't even look at this, right? I just, I, I already can predict what YouTube is going to recommend. And if you want this to change, then you deliberately change it yourself. You understand? Yeah. And then the yeah, more exactly. you look at different things, the more YouTube will, will literally focus on that. Same thing with Google, same thing with Facebook. You know, if I go to my Facebook, yeah. guess what? It's going to be mostly art. Mostly art, because guess what? I usually just follow art. And anything where my friends talk, I, right now is probably going to be overwhelmed with uh, Donald mm -hmm. Trump stuff because he's, he's being inaugurated right now. But without that being said, like, if, it was, if that wasn't happening at the moment, it would be mostly art stuff, which you can see is mostly art stuff. Yeah. Right? And this weird phenomenon that people, I don't know what's going on with this. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on when people's like uh, beautifying their faces? Anyways, yeah, but you can see like cool artwork, you know, cool artworks, artworks, weird phenomenon, I don't understand. Artwork, artwork. I mean, but isn't that weird how? Weird phenomenon, <laughs> I don't understand. Artwork. But I just ignore it, right? And, and you know, when people start to say, you know, like they start to blame their social media, like, oh, they didn't like this is the media, right? Like, uh, you should also pay attention to who you're following, who you're commenting on, what you're liking. All that contributes, right? And I treat my Facebook like a uh, my website. You know, I don't even comment often on uh, other people's posts. I don't generally do much other than post my own images and promote my classes. Uh, or promote ideas that I think are interesting, right? I treat it like another website. Like as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's equivalent to ArtStation. You understand? Yeah. And with that mentality, it, it makes Facebook less of a distraction. I'm not there distracted anywhere. I used to have Facebook for the regular reason where, you know, you connect with your friends and talk with them and stuff often, which I still do, you know? But I used to use it mostly for that, but it got really dramatic and I like there's just a lot of drama. And I was just like, oh, man, I hate this. So I got rid of my Facebook. I think I have, like, my old Facebook just floating around. And then later on, I realized, you know, I should still have a Facebook just so I can promote my artwork. And that's what I did. And it's one of the best decisions I've ever made, you know? That's, and, that's like, the only reason I use it. I never post unless it's just, like, a new thing that I worked on. Yeah. Like, I try that's to good. avoid it. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, like I said, like I will do it for the more typical reasons, like show pictures of my family and um, me doing stuff that, you know, Facebook is good for or built around social media, like social aspect of it. But uh, it's not the staple of it, if that makes sense, right? It's not the main purpose. And uh, I have friends sometimes I see complain about Facebook. They're like, oh, my God, I can't believe Facebook. Like, all I'm getting is this Donald Trump, like, hate like all these people hate me and all this stuff and you keep seeing all these like crazy articles about Donald Trump and I hate it. And I'm like, then stop clicking on those things, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not that they're putting it in front of you because they're putting it in front of you. It's because uh, you, you keep clicking on them, <laughs> you know? And yeah. like right now it's a, it's a, it's a rare occasion and it happens every so often where, um, you'll be flooded by a phenomenon, right? Like right now, President Trump, right? He's now president. He's been inaugurated. But uh, another good, another time this happened was Pokemon Go. I remember thinking, <laughs> I remember when that happened, I was like, what the, everything, no matter where I went, you know, it was just Pokemon Go. Like even the YouTube followers or people that I followed on YouTube were like talking about Pokemon Go. Like everybody, like it just was like, I was sick of it, <laughs> you know? And that rarely happens. And most on um, on the flip side, like, you know, you, you mostly just are distracting yourself. And so going back to kind of like, you know, what you're saying, 
you know, when you see other people's life and you feel, you start putting, you're filling in the gaps and it's a, it's a false narrative. You're right. And I think the more conscious you are of this false narrative, the, the better you are, right? Better off you are. Because uh, let's be clear, nobody is always super happy all the time, no matter what they say, right? It's easy to post pictures of yourself and your family doing amazing things and feeling amazing. Um, you know, my wife and I, we had a good talk about this one time. You know, she was she was talking to me about like, She's like, you know, my friend, she posts all these pictures of her and her family doing all these amazing things, right? And it's like, I, I, sometimes I get jealous of it, but then I think, like, the same person is always texting me complaining. <laughs> She's always complaining about life and, like, how, like, this is going on and how this is, like, this drama. And she's like, it made me really think. She's like, I don't think, I think she's lying about, like, what's really going on, right? And I'm like, Absolutely. And I was like, she's like, yeah, because she does all this stuff with her kids. It makes me want to do stuff, too. And I'm like, we do do stuff with our kids. We just don't post it every five seconds. But like, we literally did this today. And she's like, oh, yeah, we did. And I was like, yeah, we just didn't take pictures. We're like, who cares? We're like, we're instead of taking pictures and proving to people that we're having a good time, we're just having a good time with our children. I was That's like, so much more important. <laughs> yeah, it's like nobody is like, and trust me, nobody really cares. Like, people, you're on a, on a, on a, would love to know, like my good friends would love to know that me and my family are having a good time, you know. But at the end of the day, today, they're not like, like man, I need to go to Facebook just to see if AJ and Bay are having a good day today. Like nobody on on the I'm a conscious level is thinking that way. You know what I mean? Like I said, like my friends do care about me and my my kids and what we're doing, of course. But they're not, you know, they're not not sleeping at night because they need to find out. Like I can't wait to show see what they post tomorrow. Like, I really want to know, you know. Uh, and I'm sure some people out there are like that with their favorite celebrities and stuff, but um, I, this type of stuff is no interest to in me. What really interests me, like I told you, is to you know hang out with the people that I truly love and help you guys out, like students. Like my career is now built mostly around educating and helping others, and and one of the one of the parts of that is like teaching you guys how to draw, right? Of course, and becoming better character artists so you can get a job eventually, right? That's great. But more importantly, prepare you when you get those jobs because it will happen. <laughs> you know, it just it's, it's inevitable. If you keep working for it and you keep practicing and you keep training, it's just going to happen eventually, right? I don't know. I'm not, I'm, sure, I'm not sure when. I have a prediction that if you put a good work every day for years, I think three to four years is a good amount of time for you to start to be established as an artist. I don't think it will take more than that, okay? Because it took me about three to four years. Uh, and I was trying really hard, and there was less stuff available, you know? And so I think now you don't even have to try as hard, but three to four years, totally possible. And it's having, like, I've been teaching my mentorship for three years now, uh, almost three to four years, and all the students who started in the beginning are getting jobs, are starting to mm -hmm. get jobs and starting to get really good with their artwork, as I predicted, you know? Um and so for most of you, you know, you can look forward to the next three to four years, but potentially be a, a much better artist and have more opportunities, you know? Yeah. And the key word there is opportunities. There's no guarantee. But the better your work is and the more you put your stuff out there, the more your opportunities will come, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you're afraid of that, there's not enough work out there. Trust me, there's definitely work. You just got to stand out amongst the crowd, okay? And so, you know, getting back to kind of like the, the habit building, you know, another metaphor that I like to use is like a lot of people try to get, they get concerned with um, motivation, right? They're like, you know, how do you stay motivated? And I'm like, well, you know, I used to make that a staple of my diet and I actually even had like a, a whole speech on how to stay motivated and tools that, that work. But then I started really, I started redirecting my, my education on this because it became clear to me that patience and resilience, right? I've told you guys about this before. Um, and here's what patience and resilience looks like versus motivation and inspiration, right? So let's imagine that these X's are like just bundles of sticks, just like like a fire about to burn, right? And what inspiration looks like is this. Like you just have this nice, huge fire, right? And you're like, awesome, yeah? And then as the days go on, you know, the fire burns down. And eventually just becomes embers again. Kind of like we were talking about list one, list two. Remember that? But what patience and resilience looks like is just the fire is constantly burning. 
You see the difference, mm -hmm. right? And the, the cool thing about this is that when you do get inspired, let's say you get inspired on this day, right? The fire mm -hmm. burns big, but then when it starts to go down, it will go back to the baseline. Makes sense. Yeah. But if yeah. you don't have a baseline, if you don't have like a, a standard, right? Of patience and resilience, like uh, every day, no matter what, I'm going to do one hour of drawing or painting, right? Like if you don't have something like that instilled into your, your system, then, you know, like for instance, for my, my health regimen, um, my, my diet is pretty much on lockdown now. I pretty much got it. We, we just eat tons of rice and beans, lentils, potatoes, and we just, we just garnish it and make it our, make it tasty. And then our, our taste buds have completely been reformatted you know so we don't need a lot of sugar fat or salt anymore in our food to taste any any good you know so uh i used to eat candies a lot but i don't eat candies anymore because i just get it for my fruits and i just i feel satisfied in my life <laughs> okay but so uh you know the baseline for for my working out is no matter what i'm going to put 15 minutes of working out no matter what 15 minutes is, is totally doable, and I can do it at any time in the day, right? And then uh, I'm, I, that actually started off at 10 minutes, and I just brought it up to 15 minutes, mostly because of my surgery. I think I could do an hour already, but I don't want to bust my head open again, <laughs> all right? So I'm going to wait till like February, mid-February, early March to start getting heavier into it. But the idea is that by that time, I would have incrementally increase my time limit you know what i mean yeah. yeah so i'm not i'm in no hurry you know i plan to live to 100 so it's fine like, i'm in no hurry to be in better shape right and uh and you guys shouldn't either with whatever like you should be in no hurry like yeah. i know like sometimes things come and life deals in your hand that you didn't expect and you want to you, you do have to make a, a dash attempt i get that but my point is, is that, you know, no matter what happens, if you build like some sort of system, right, it's better. Uh, one of my friends, Mike, he, he sent this article about systems versus goals. And I liked it. I liked it a lot. And I'm still kind of wrapping my mind around why I think that's really good. But on the surface, basically, it says, you know, goals are like superficial a little bit, right? Like, you know, I want to be a concept artist. But what does that truly mean? You know, because once you get there, does that mean you're done? And are you happy? But what a system does is like, uh, every day, I just want to draw, right? So you just see the difference because one is like there's like a finish line, but when so eventually you might get to that finish line, or if you don't get to that finish line, that that scope of failure is amplified, right? But if you just want to draw every day, you know you can do that. And the the the, the irony of that simpler mentality is um, that you will just subsequently become a concept artist because you were drawing every day. You know what I mean? It's not like it, it, the intention wasn't entirely there. Like I didn't intend to be a teacher. That's for this is a good example of something that happened to me. Like I intended to be a concept artist. That was like a goal, right? But I didn't intend to be a teacher. I, me and my friends would get together. We would teach each other. I loved it. I loved giving critiques. I loved getting critiques. I loved growing and helping each other and and working together as a team to kind of accomplish our goals. I loved it. You know, I loved growing together. I love learning. I love like teaching people what I've learned, you know. And I started getting in front of classes, and I started teaching and doing like workshops because people asked me to. And I started doing that. And I started liking it. And I did more and more and more, and I just just love to just help people out and teach. And then uh, now I just do it. It's like my job, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, subsequently, I got really good at it. Right, I got pretty good at teaching and helping people get to their where they need to go. Uh, and it's not because I'm this god. Uh, got this god-given gift to teach uh, i've been doing this for about almost six years now right and and if i look back at my life like uh, i was always i was training to become a teacher you know from taking drama classes to always loving to research and look into things that were really interesting to me you know the the art of practice is something that i always enjoyed like, i like to just practice and get good at stuff and i like to share how i got good at it always you know and I just sharpened that blade over the my whole life. You know what I mean? Like the the 
the fact that I moved a lot when I was a kid taught me how to be very social and very charismatic because I had to constantly make new friends often, you know? Like, nothing is an accident, you understand? And so um, there's a great book that I'm reading that's really kind of compounding this idea. It's called the, um, it's called uh, Mastery. And the, basically the book's just going on and on about how all these people that were considered geniuses and great minds of their time um, basically just followed their hearts, okay, and listened to their internal, internal soul, right? And because of that, that's why they became masters at whatever they were, right? For instance, like Einstein, when he was a young kid, one of his science teachers, I believe, introduced this idea that there's invisible forces like gravity that control and manage things, and nobody can see it nor really touch it, and it fascinated him to no end. And then guess what? His whole life's work was around this idea of invisible forces, you know? That's cool, man. That happened to him when he was a kid, you know? Um, uh, Darwin loved when he was a kid. Like Charles Darwin loved when he was a kid, he used to go to the wilderness and just look at stuff and collect things like little animals and or like shells and rocks and bark. Like he collected just random stuff, you know, and his dad thought that he was going to be a, a, a screw up. He failed at school. He failed at all the things his dad suggested him to do, you know. And then when Darwin um, eventually went to college because he, his dad basically forced him to, he went and then he went and he did barely did well while like he passed it all in the hopes to you know prove his father right like to to make his father proud uh and he had this great teacher this teacher said you know i think you'll be really interested in being a naturalist like looking at the natural world and then darwin's dad's like nah like he's gonna be this he's gonna go work at the church right and his teacher's like no nah, he, he should do this because it's clearly clearly he lo loves it he's, he excels at it naturally and Darwin himself was just like, I don't know. I don't. I want to make sure that you know I succeed in life. And then he he basically turned out the job offer. But as he thought about it more and more, he decided, you know, I really actually I probably should do this thing. It sounds very attractive, right? His dad was really against it, but luckily his uncle, you know, loved his little nephew. Is like, no, you, you should let him give give him a shot, right? So his dad eventually signed off on this. And as soon as he went on this boat trip to South America. You know, um, Darwin hated it and immediately realized his da dad was right. Like, this was not the life for him. And he hated it. And he's like, oh, what the hell was I thinking? He missed his family. He's getting extremely depressed. He was getting seasick. But eventually, you know, he was stuck, though. So he had to deal with it. He was forced to, like, manage it. And so he started to adapt and basically learn. He taught himself natural selection without even knowing it. He started paying attention to the weaknesses and the, 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 the strengths of his crewmates, and he tried to adopt the, the strengths and to um, sympathize with the weaknesses, so that way he became more friendly and became more adapted with the crewmen, right? And then when he finally arrived to South America, his character kind of changed dramatically, and when he was exposed to all this new natural world that he'd never seen before, it, like, it excited his mind like no other. And before, where he had a hard time, like just sitting down, just studying and researching and practicing, it was no problem anymore because he was like in the thing that he loved, you know. And then, I uh, guess what? Charles Darwin is like we talk about him still to this day, right? And the the whole point of like what I'm trying to get at is that... <laughs> the the whole the whole point I'm trying to get at is you know it took his whole life and all the things leading up to that to become Charles Darwin, you understand? And for whatever reason, people feel like there has to be like some sort of like trick, you know? And then, and then everything will be awakened. Where the reality is, and this is why I always have you guys, I always ask you guys, like, what do you want to do, right? Don't do what other people are recommending you do. Like, what is it that your, your internal monologue is saying about what you want to do? Right, because that's what you should be trying to do more of. And then once you start to do it, then I can, you know, quantifiably and objectively help you get there. Right? Instead of just like, you know, just fill in the fill into the dots. You know, draw from dot to dot. You know, you guys aren't going to become unique in individuals if you do that. Right? That's why uh, I highly recommend people do whatever they want. Really, 
you know, we'll stick and focus on characters is the reason why you took the class in the first place. But beyond that, like you can you have stylized characters, you can have more monstrous, you can have more realistic, you know, doesn't matter to me. All, all that matters now is that you love it and you build quality work around it. Yeah, and I think society has not done a really good job, or the educational system has not done a really good job of educating people of that this is the reality of life, right? And if more schools did this, then more people wouldn't graduate high school uh, more confused and completely clueless to what to do next, right? Hmm. Like, including myself, including all my friends, my close friends, I don't know any, I, I think I know maybe one or two people out of the hundreds and thousands of people that I've ever met in my life that were like, I knew exactly what I wanted to do, you know? And those those happen. Rarely they do happen, and those are great. It was very admirable whenever I see that happen. Uh, but I didn't, you know, and most of my students don't. So that's why I'm here to kind of help you out with that, right? So, so getting back to kind of the principal idea of all the stuff, kind of the moral of the story, guys, is just pay attention to kind of your life, like what's been going on already. And just be patient with your growth and be patient with your um, the adapta adaptability? Adaptability? Adaptability. Adaptability, <laughs> thank you. I started it wrong. That's why it was hard to finish. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, like, you know, you got to work on that so that way you can basically, you know, accomplish your life goal of basically doing the things that you think you really should be doing. You know, I, I had a student who she joined uh, and she wanted to do concept art and she really is ambitious for it. And I said, you know, what I noticed though is I look at like the kind of stuff that you're really interested in and it looks like you're really interested in cosplay, right? Even the first time I met her in real life because we went to Van uh, not Vancouver, um, we went to uh, Toronto for a workshop. And the first time I saw her, like she was in my class and I saw her for the first time, she was in cosplay <laughs> and i'm like you know you know you, you should reconsider maybe cosplay is your your future maybe costume design right yeah. like you should reconsider concept art because i don't think like i think you chose it because it's art and you're drawing characters you know but i think really what it is is like character or costume design you know or cosplay hmm. And she, she, I think she really listened to that, but I don't know. I have to check in on her and see if she's still continuously doing that. You know, because uh, people ignore their own, like, the things that they're just naturally uh, inclined, inclined towards, you know. For me, uh, like, I, I think I've, I really found kind of the first step to my life's calling, which is to be a teacher, to help people. And it doesn't even necessarily mean a, a teacher of painting, right? Like, I am I have a goal of learning a lot of different things and going to start teaching a lot of different things. You know what I mean? Um, like, I have a goal of becoming an astrophysicist one day. I think I'm going to start um, probably in the next few months. I have a few things I need to get taken care of before I take on a whole new task. But like I said, I'm in, I'm in no hurry. It's not a major priority of mine. But it's something that I do want to do. And the first steps is just to start learning some basic math again and start being able to do math in my head, you know? This is a, a real ambition of me of mine is to just have some sort of sense of science, you know? And I do my due diligence, due diligence by just watching videos often and taking notes mentally, right? Yeah, because it's really interesting to me. I'm really interested Astro... in space and, and science. Astrophysics? Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> so you That's see... That's empty, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it appears heavy, just like many things. Right? It looked like this this painting that I did looks like it would have taken me a million years, remember? No, it just took 10. <laughs> so maybe in my 40s and 50s... Uh, we'll have this conversation again and you'll be showing up to a convention where I'm talking about, you know, gravitational uh, waves in the formula that I discovered. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a, uh, it's an illusion. This, this sense of growth, 
So let me give you guys one good example. And then we'll, we'll ask another question. This question led to several different answers, which was great. It all started with, how do you work out more? Right? <laughs> and it led to like this super like avoid midlife crisis solutions, right? So anyway, one of the things that I, uh, I love to talk about is magic. So whenever you see somebody do something, it, it just appears like magic, right? So there's this magician. Um, I was watching this documentary about the kid magicians. And what he would do is he would open this window to the bus, right? And he would have, in one hand, he would have a card, right? And then he would just be like, I'm going to put my other hand on the other side of this glass, okay? And then he would, mm-hmm. he would basically slam his hand with the card in the palm of his hand against this glass, right? And then as soon as he removed his hand from the glass, guess what? The card, the card was on the other side. The card was on the other side, right? And it was not in his hand anymore. And you're like, what? Magic, right? <laughs> well, the reality was that he actually had the card behind the other hand, a very standard kind of deception of hiding a card, right? And then what he did with the other hand, I forget exactly, but he, he, he had a really – oh, I think he just hid it in the palm, and as he put it down, he would hide it like in his lap or hide it on the side he, or just throw it away so it would be completely gone. And so when he starts to move his other hand, it would be free of any card, right? But there was two cards involved, and it was it was a very clear deception. Well, once he explained it, you're like, oh, okay, I can see how he did it now, right? But then he explained that this was very like why this trick was a very was very metaphoric about his whole process as a magician, okay? Because he explained the trick is simple. Like I I came up with the idea and I thought I figured out how to do it, right? I I had a good sense of how to do it. Like I knew it was simple to do. But the problem was that it was very hard to do. It was hard to get people to look in the right direction at the right time. It was hard to switch the cards out in a way where people wouldn't notice. It was hard to keep the card from falling out of my other hand and out into traffic, you know, while they're driving, you know, <laughs> which would ruin the whole trick, you know. And so he said for about a year, every day, while he would take the bus to school, he would practice this trick. Hmm. And I love this because what it is is – the this is the the thing when I say hey I'm gonna be astrophysicist you're like oh dude that's crazy that's like seeing a magic trick and not knowing how it's done you understand and just being like man like you know that you know that's like a thing that's really hard to do and I'm like yes I know <laughs> because the solution is simple I just gotta learn myself some good math and some good physics right. And as I learn more, I will start to learn the nuances over time, the things that I really need to learn, like stuff that I don't know that I have to learn yet, you know? The solution is simple to accomplish this magic trick, this appearance of a magic trick. I just got to do it. I got to sit on the bus every day for a year doing astrophysics. Get it? Mm-hmm. It's, it's a metaphor. It's not going to take a year. <laughs> It's gonna take much longer than that. I'm I'm assured, but I, I don't think I don't think it will take my lifetime. You know, I don't think I need a lifetime to be able to do it, because uh, we have access to um, so much information. You know, and a lot of like these people who are super geniuses uh, back in the day were super geniuses because uh, there was no access to the information that they had access to. You know, but that has mm-hmm. changed in the last few decades. You understand? Uh, I believe there was a scientist. There's a guy who became a scientist on his own. Like he built a like a fusion, like a, a, a not a fusion reactor, but like a, a small something reactor, like a nuclear reactor, in his garage. What? And he was like 12 or 15. He was very young too when he did it. But he because he was just interested. He's like, I wonder if I could do that. And he built one in his his garage. And it started small, like really small, like he had a very small ambition. But then as he started realizing, oh, I can totally get access to uh, uranium, you know? And I was like, what? He was like, how the hell did you get access to this stuff? He's like, oh, yeah, you can find it in like this. And I just collected like thousands of them, you know, over like many years. And he just built one, you know? And so so my point is, is that, That's you know, it, it, 
Yeah, on the sur <laughs> on the surface, it may seem like you know things are just so far away and so unachievable, um, and that used to be true. That was absolutely true at a time, you know, where yeah. like to to get become at that level of intelligence definitely required a lot of like of things to line up correctly, right, in your life. But now, uh, if you as long as you have access to the internet, um, you can kind of accomplish most of what I'm saying, right. The internet is one of the greatest inventions in in the modern times. Oh yeah. And if you if Absolutely. you recognize that, then you you will you you shouldn't scoff at the idea that I could be an astrophysicist. You know what I mean? You should be like, man, that's actually totally possible, isn't it? <laughs> you know? And and probably not as long as you might think. I might not even need a decade. I might be able to do it in four to five years if I really burst myself and put the time in. Okay, because that's really what it is. It's just time, time and effort. And right now I'm not oh, putting in uh, the time, but I'm putting minimal effort. You know, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't doubt. You know, I wouldn't doubt the ability to become an astrophysicist. That's just like, that's just so much math. <laughs> like, yeah, I was looking you... at that through my own filter of like, just yeah, not liking math. <laughs> that's just so much math. Yeah, you know, and let me tell you something. <laughs> You, you don't know how much math. You might not be as much math as you think. And another thing you should consider is just because uh, you're not good at something um, is, or, or just because you don't like something, you should reveal to you that maybe it's because you're not good at it. And just because you're not good at it doesn't mean you can never be good at it, right? And so yeah. I call that, I actually call it the badass threshold. It's where you're, you, you, you discount something because of your lack of skill versus the actual reality of it because you might end up loving math once you start to understand it and become good at it right uh, a good example is when i used to play league of legends i hated that game i hated playing i thought it was so stupid i'm like this game's so bad and i was really bad at it and my friends like no trust us like, it's a really good game like keep playing with us and I'm like, all right i'll play and i kept playing just because my friends you know i love playing with my friends i'm a social dude so i was like yeah let's do it kept playing it kept hating it but then eventually I started killing people. Uh, and eventually I started understanding the meta. And eventually I started understanding the characters and the, the, the design of the characters, like why they were designed the way they were. And I started seeing the Matrix, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then when that started happening, I started loving the game. I thought the game was great. I was like, man, this game is so well designed. And I was like, it's just that entry is so harsh, you know? And, yeah. um, and so, so... My point is, is that, you know, that could be the same for you, right? Like, if you had some similar interests, and you're like, you know, but it's the math that slows me down. I was like, well, you know, start learning some basic math again, you know? Find the math that does interest you. Like, I, I think physics naturally interests me because there's a very, a very, like, formulas you can apply to real life. Like, a formula I still memorize to this day, and I actually still apply. I teach my kids all the time, especially with opening jars, is force, uh, is mass times acceleration. I said, look, even though you're tiny, you know, try to screw, unscrew it faster. Try to accelerate it. And then you'll put more force. Oh. Right? And sure enough, they'll be able to, they break things easier because they do it faster. Even though they're tiny people. Right? <laughs> and it's, it's just like, uh, there's a strong man who lived on that, that, um, who's strong because of that. Like he, he they tested his strength. His strength was, default like it was normal there was or not normal but it was like it was average it was like for his size and weight like it's it was pretty average like he was strong but nothing that explains why he can rip phone books in half right and then uh they tested his, the the muscle reflex and that's where they saw the phenomenon like his muscle reflex is like extraordinarily fast mm. and i was like dope force t equals mass times acceleration at its best that's why Bruce Lee was able to like like punch so hard because he would punch so fast, you yeah. know. Um, it was the same thing, right? So uh, you know, stuff like that, like the, like those types of things, fascinate me. Like equations that are practically used on a daily basis, you know, in our life. Um, when I was doing some basic programming, I was learning some programming in Unreal, and I was like, oh, I see the I see the face of God. Because when you see how like programming works, you're like, of course, and you're like, this is why the universe works the way it does, and it's it's super fascinating. 
so yeah, I, I have I have some real inklings to get started on that um, relatively soon. Now that I've recovered my surgery or recovering from it, but I still have a lot of things that I've put on my plate over the the last several years. That I'm starting to I'm still removing, you know. And as I remove these things, I start to free up more of my time. But yeah, I mean, getting back to kind of the whole point, guys, it's like patience, resilience. Put all your talent points in there into that, and you'll see a you'll see a huge resurgence in your you'll you'll see a huge emergence of your own personal growth. Trust me. Any other questions? Um. At, at is is part of this class um this is like a big change in uh topic but um it, it, is is part of this class like reviewing our current portfolios because i feel like you might be able to provide uh some really important insight into like what like what we've already you know uh, done and the direction that we've already been heading in and like sure you might be able to give us like you know some uh, pointers on like you know tweaking going forward and stuff like that I, I I usually check people's portfolios at the end of the class if they really want me to look okay. at it because then at that point I would have no bias and mm -hmm. then uh, when I look at your portfolio at that time then I can give you some insight based of what you did for the class and how you your personality was towards it and then I can give you some more practical advice. At least that's what I feel. Yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, so, yeah, so just wait. Then just ask okay. towards the end. Absolutely, we'll do that. No big deal. Cool. That's cool. So you feel like you, you do it like, like you teach us kind of like a blindly first, yeah. asking if you've never seen our work, and, and then yeah, eventually. Yeah, because sometimes people are like, I'm really good. Or, like, they won't say that yeah. outright, but they'll, like, subcon or, like, uh, not subconsciously, but, like, indirectly say something like that and they're like oh you should really look at my portfolio and then i look yeah. at it and then it's pretty good i'm like oh that's great um then how come you didn't do so well in the class right it's like uh uh or yeah. vice versa like you know like you did really really well like and you should totally redo your portfolio right um yeah. and it works better at the end because in that way you know i'm just looking at your genuine effort at the moment versus because sometimes like a portfolio is misleading right like you you show me a painting that you spent two months working on you know like i don't know right, right. You know, it could you could have totally spent a lot of time on something and and there's nothing wrong with that either but it's it could be misleading to me right because then i could start critiquing you a little bit harsher that is probably detrimental to your growth rather than uh pr productive right i usually just focus on current issues versus um really larger underlining ones but i'm more than happy to do that towards the end of the class like help you look at more underlining issues cool yeah that's uh that's awesome yeah that's that's how i feel about it it's worked out so far yeah any other questions that was a good one uh anthony i had a question yeah man go for it uh so like i was searching for references the other day and uh, I, I found it like easier to get like you know, costume references and props references because you just like uh, Google or go to Pinterest and like medieval armor or something. Yeah. But uh, when I was searching for like gestures for my character, I just like uh, ended up copying other artists' gestures. Sure. So is there like a, a website or something, or how do I like approach searching for like yeah, gestures there, towards my character? There's absolutely reference references for that uh, i don't know offhand what they would be right but there's like anything there's like anything you can imagine nowadays it's probably on the internet but you know what is more valuable than what with that what you're suggesting is probably in your own pocket your smartphone right take pictures of your own poses <laughs> you know because then that's truly yours you know what i mean like you can be inspired by other people's poses but but more importantly, you can just come up with your own. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, masters, the old masters did that all the time. They would either have models that would come in and they would tell them to stand a certain way. If you have friends or family nearby, like, yeah, just like, hey, do you mind, like, standing like you're a badass warrior? <laughs> you know? And just take a picture of them. 
And if you get like a, a couple, if you have a couple more friends and you have some really high powered flashlights, you can do some dynamic <laughs> lighting. No, I'm serious. And it's like actually really, you'll be like surprised how like do it yourself is so easy today, you know. Remember, like Michelangelo had to like go in the mountains to <laughs> like get his raw material. You have like pretty much everything you need in your smartphone, you know. No, uh, I mean like uh, like for example, like I look at your uh, your painting, right? and uh, I mean like uh, you have like gestures that like tell the story very nicely. I mean there's like a sort of storytelling that's like hidden. If, if I do it, I might, it might look like retarded or something. Uh, well, uh, I'm just telling you, like, if you're looking for, like, how to get better at it, I'm telling you, like, you just gotta just find the references that are useful to you, and on, on the same note, you should also pay attention to, um, you should pay attention to your, to the tools that you have accessible to you, you know what I mean? And in terms of, like, posing for me, like, I, I have a lot of ability, mostly because I study a lot. Okay, like I, I looked at a lot of um, I looked at a lot of reference and I studied people like Bridgman often, mm-hmm. you know, Bogarth, or Hogarth, Bern Hogarth, yeah. like that guy stuff, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so you, you just got to do the same thing. You just gotta, if, you, if it's something that you're really, you want to like, I want to be really good at gesture drawing or whatever, then you just got to practice it too. You know? Like I was just saying, you know. Anything you want to be good at, I gave you the tools. I gave you the, the, the direct tools and wisdom to accomplish those goals now, right? It is no, there's nothing complicated about it. It is it really as simple as just putting in the time and work, okay? Uh, if you want to be able to just come up with, like, really good design sensibility without uh, necessarily pulling the reference, then that means you have to internalize a lot of reference now, right? You have to know more anatomy than you did before. You have to know more gesture and perspective, you know? This, These are the tools that are going to accelerate your growth, right? Uh, otherwise, yeah, you know, um, you're always going to be shooting in the dark if you're not constantly looking at new reference or studying or creating your own reference, as I'm suggesting. I really suggest you should create your own reference because it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really interesting uh tool that most people don't they forgot that this is like a master's tool masters do this uh, because it's like why not <laughs> You're like why why would you think that you can't like take a photo of yourself uh, and more importantly um, you know if you practice your the art of googling you'll find your own reference easier but it really is like an art I, I feel like if I had any kind of true talent it might be because um or any kind of preset that I have that's better than most, it's my ability to find information because I just don't give up until I find answers. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so you need to get in the habit of that as well. But my, my um, so that's my teaching you how to fish. You know, you, you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, you teach uh, a man how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. So I taught you how to fish. You should, you should, you should research on your own, never give up, keep finding it. Like, I'm sure there's reference images out there or websites. I'm positive. Uh, my Pinterest has a lot of stuff. I mean, you can just Pinterest it, too. You can just gather. Like, just don't look at one or two artists. Look at hundreds, if not thousands of different artists. You know, so your poses will be varied, right? Look at animation. Animation or animators, they really understand the art of posing characters, you know? Um, and then uh, the giving you a fish so you can get fed for a day, use your phone, take pictures of yourself. So that's like the most immediate solution, okay? Right? But in the meanwhile, also like get better about finding this type of reference. You know, it, it's out there, I assure you. I'm not sure where it is, but uh, because for me, a lot of what I did was I used books. I studied a lot of books, right? And I did a lot of life drawing, right? I did tons of life drawing. But that's not practical, I know. Like most people, like I was still at school during that time, so it was easier for me to kind of just practically find tons and tons of uh, reference, you know? Uh, I'm sorry, not tons and tons of opportunity to do life drawing. Uh, even recently, I looked into it, there's like life drawing at a local school, and so I'm thinking about doing that as well. You know? So it's definitely available for me 
versus like other people. I know most people don't have necessarily the access to this stuff. But if you have access to the internet, which I know you do because you're taking a class, you know, <laughs> then uh, use it. Really do, man. Like I was saying, like it's a freaking powerful tool. Just because you can't find it in the first five seconds doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Even in the first hour or even in the first few hours. Watch. Let's do it together. Let's spend like five minutes together right now. Amazing pose reference for drawing. Oh, I, just, I knew I spelled it wrong. I put too many E's and R's and A's. Oh, look, there's already a lot of images, which is great. So the first thing that I would say is, oh, this is pretty good. This kind of says, okay, you know, this is about, like, I should just, like, practice life drawing. That's the first inclination that I just got. Oh, this is pretty interesting. You know? I would just, like, gather these images, start saving them. A thousand plus ideas about poses? I mean, it didn't even take me, yeah, it didn't even take me that long, did it? I found, like, perhaps something that I'm going to even use. But, yeah, you bet your ass I'm following this. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, okay. I'm going to bookmark it then. I'm going to put it into cool. I'll, I'll figure this out later. You know, so whenever whenever people suggest, like, hey, how do you find stuff? Uh, same way as everyone else. Google. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm not a magician. You know? I, I didn't have somebody say, you know, I, I didn't have some sort of witch doctor, right, that I went and talked to, and he's like, now if you go into the wilderness and you look underneath a, a yellow stone, you'll find a, a magical magnifying glass, and that magnifying glass, whenever you look through it, will reveal to you answers beyond the cosmos. You know, I didn't do that, I just Googled it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my magical magnifying yeah, glass is so just my fingers. My magical magnifying glass is my fingers and the website Google, you know? Yeah. And so you, you should you should really, really respect the Googles. You know, it's it's <laughs> fucking amazing. And um, did I tell you guys the, the story about the, the Kenyan who learned how to javelin all from YouTube videos? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you, yeah, yeah. if you haven't heard about it, yeah, there's a guy who wanted to become a javelin javeliner. And, you know, in Kenya, they don't have javelins, like instructions or schools, let alone the actual tool, the javelin. They don't sell them, right? And this guy was like, javelin looks dope. So he decided to become a javelinier or whatever the heck they call them. And uh, all he did was just uh, go to YouTube, like every day, and just watch tutorials and coaching, and, and then eventually became a javelin. Uh, extraordinaire. He became one of the best in the world. He went to the Olympics. I, I think he set records, too. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. You have a huge advantage, and take advantage of that advantage. You know? A lot of people yeah. in this world don't have access to the internet. There's some people, there's some kids right now that are like, their, their main concern is what they're going to eat tomorrow. Let alone, like, can I get a job in the concept industry? You know? It gives you it gets some perspective, right? Like on your on your advantages versus disadvantages. You know, at the same time, though, you know, uh, you might have your own disadvantages that I I don't have, right? And I am very aware of that. I take advantage that I live in Southern California, and like literally an hour or two away from the, the biggest industry in the world, Hollywood and video games, right? I live like a hop, skip, and jump away from some of the biggest companies, you know. Yeah. And I take advantage, man. Whenever they have mixers or events, I go to them. Or at least I used to go to them like, often. You know? There's a big one coming up uh, in San Diego, DDC. I'm going to be there. You know? It's just how yeah. it is, man. And uh, and for those people who do not do these big events, like I, I, I really say, why not? You know, well, I don't have enough money. Well, save it. You know, save a dollar here, five dollars there, you know? Be, be a little bit less careless with your, your spending, and then that way you can save enough money to go to these things. Right? Yeah. And, uh, and the next thing you know, you go, and then you'll see why it's so valuable to go and meet people and talk to people. Understand? 
So yeah, getting back to the post thing though, yeah, I, f I sent you reference. <laughs> yeah, thanks. For yeah, yeah, you could have done the same thing, right? Like, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to show you, like, it's, it's nothing magical about it. Remember, like, that uh, example of the magician? Like, he didn't do anything. He, he figured it out, he thought about it, and he's like, I think this is how I can do the magic trick, right? And then uh, mm -hmm. he just put the work in. Um, I, I know there's a, a great thing that Penn and Teller, Penn from Penn and Teller, says about magic um, where he was like you know some of the most extravagant and most amazing illusions and magic tricks right that people see and that people are like oh my god that's amazing have the easiest solutions to them and and if i were to tell you how they were done would remove the value of their illusion right he said this about magic and a, a good example of this is a magic that i learned that is one of the most impressive ones that when i show the people they, they can't believe it and then when I reveal to them how it's done, and I, I usually tell you guys, people in class, it's a really, really cool thing, which is, uh, okay, imagine that you and me are sitting across from each other, and I have a deck of cards, right? And I shuffle the deck of cards, and you shuffle it. I let you shuffle them even, right? I'm like, you can shuffle them. You can do whatever you want. And then we take the deck, we cut it in half. I can have you cut it. I can cut it. It doesn't matter. We cut the deck. Then you take half of the deck, and I take the half of the deck, and we put it in front of ourselves. And we fan the cards up, like right in front of our eyes. And what we're doing is, I look in your eyes, you look into my eyes, and then I tell you to pick a card and then lift it up, right? So it's standing out from all the other cards. And I do the same. And I want you to stare at me and at the card and try to see what card I picked. And I will do the same thing. We're going to read each other's minds. And after we've done that for a, a few moments, uh, we, we put the cards down, we switch hands, so you give me your deck, I'll give you your mine, and then we look for the cards that we think that we, we chose, okay? We use the power of our minds and our psychic connection, you know? And then eventually you pick a card, you put it down on the table, and I pick a card and I put it down on the table, right? And then the magic begins, and I say to you, um, I think your card is the Ace of Spades, right? And you're like, what? That was the Ace of Spades, right? Like, how did I know? I was like, because we were psych psychologically connected, right? Psychically, right? But the real trick is, did you find my card, right? And before you tell me, I have to say it, right? Because it wouldn't be a magic trick if you just said it, and then I said, that's my card, right? I have to tell you what card I chose. And if you happen to choose that card, how did you know, you know? And so I say to you, the card that I chose was the Ten of Diamonds. And you're like, what? I chose the Ten of Diamonds. And it's freaking amazing. And everyone's like, how the hell did you do that? How did you read my mind? And how did I read your mind? You know? And the, yeah. the, the trick is really easy. The trick is really simple. The cards are marked. And I know how to read the markings. You understand? <laughs> So that moment when the cards are in front of us, and you put that card up, I read the back of the card, I saw that you picked the Ace of Spades. I know what card you picked. And the card that I chose is irrelevant. I can choose anything. And then I give you my deck, and then you give me mine, and then we go through the notions, and then I say, oh, it's the Ace of Spades, right? Because I already read the card, right? But the yeah. thing is, is that I read, when we put the, when you put my card down on the, on the table, I read it my card, the card that you chose for me at that moment. You see what I'm saying? So then when I say, oh, the card that I chose was the Ten of Diamonds, you're like, what? Magic! <laughs> right? But it's a it's a simple trick, and it's just cheap. It cheapens the trick, and the illusion starts to like, oh, that's cheating. Like, you didn't do any kind of weird craftery, right? But if I would have never told you, you would have thought that I would have some immaculate solution, right? Some sort of like crazy like technique of like 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 reading your mind or like maybe setting up some sort of subconscious message in your brain with the words I was saying or something crazy. You know, your imagination will be more elaborate than what actually is reality. And so the case in point, same thing. Google it. There's nothing amazing about how I research. <laughs> right? I just look online and I just keep looking. So I have answers, you know? <laughs> it's, just, it's the same deal. Like, that story that I gave you is, is an example of, like, this, this circumstance that we just ran into.
Well, hopefully you understand. Yeah. Yeah? I'm not doing anything yeah. that's more special than you can do. I've just been doing it for longer. Mm -hmm. like, nothing that I've done is more amazing and more spectacular than anything that you guys have done. I've just been doing it longer. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's definitely nuances on how to look and research and study, but there are nuances. The first thing is just just get into it, get in the habit of doing it more often, and then you'll start asking more uh, more s straightforward questions, more um, more um, complicated questions. That I'm like, oh, okay, you're at that level now. Got it. Let's talk about this stuff, right? And that will come, especially towards the end of the class. You guys will be wiser. You guys will start asking some more elaborate questions. I assure you. Yep. I'll take on one more question and I'm going to go. You know, right now, me and my son are doing a thing where, uh, like I told you guys, I'm trying to get good at a lot of stuff. So one of the things I'm trying to get good at a lot of things, or the thing that I'm trying to get get at at the mo moment, is uh, three pointers. Right, it's a very simple, very physical thing, and uh, my goal is to go every day and try to shoot a three pointer <laughs> uh, for several minutes at a time. Right, and then eventually I I I have a very clear suspicion that I'm going to get really good at three pointers if I keep this up for months. <laughs> right. I have no doubt, and the goal is to, the, the goal is simple, is to prove that if just pure practice alone is very powerful, right? Um, but also, I just want to hang out with my, my youngest teenager, it's something that he likes to do, and it, it's something like, he, he's really stubborn, he's like, I'm really already good at three-pointers, I'm like, oh, okay, we'll see, and he, I'm just as good as he is, <laughs> and uh, he's... Yeah, man. Uh, you have, to, you have to like get really good at it, and then he's gonna be all pissed at you. Well, he's gonna be good. At, he's gonna get good at it with me, right? He's like, he was telling me, he's like, you know, some days I'm really good, and other days I'm like, you know, like today's is a bad day. I'm just having a bad day, and I was like, well, that's the problem. He's like, you don't practice enough. He's like, see, when you practice enough, you don't. Your bad days will be very, very few, and then the days that are bad are going to be above average, right? Yeah, you don't have you don't have bad days because you're already unconsciously good at it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like your bad days will be con contextually different. Like maybe, like right now, for instance, five minutes of shooting, we I barely made five shots. And he made six in five minutes, right? And so, you know, I imagine like in a few months, we'll 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 double that to like ten, maybe even twelve shots, right? Uh, in five minutes, and uh, you know, if we keep this up for years, you know, maybe we'll make you know. Uh, 15 to 20 shots, you know? And if we're having a bad day, our bad day is like maybe 10 shots. But that's going to be like remarkably better than what we were doing before, right? Yeah. And I was trying to explain that to him, and he's like, oh, I think you're right. Because he, 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 he's he's still young and naive, and so he's like really kind of like uh, insecure about being bad at stuff, and I'm trying to teach him how to get out of that. And a lot of it, too, is because uh, he has, um, he's my stepson. So he still has visits his dad, and his dad's not the greatest of people, <laughs> okay, yeah. and teaches him really terrible lessons that I'm like trying to like really get him out of, yeah. right? And uh, yeah, something like this will help him get out of it. Like he, it already happened. Like after just that, that because we did it yesterday, and he already was like, yeah, yeah, I need more practice. Like he already got out of that stubbornness immediately, because I wasn't like making fun of him. I wasn't saying like you should be better. I was just like, yeah, see, it's okay. Like. We'll keep at it and watch. And like in a month or so, you're gonna be really good. He's like, yeah, I think so. And I was like, yeah, it's gonna yeah. be fun. I was like, we're gonna be really good at this. And uh, yeah, today we're gonna do it again. And uh, I'm gonna, I'll, you guys will check in at the end of the class. I'll tell you how how it's going. So right now, five minutes. I can only make five shots. It's one shot a minute. That's really bad. But it's okay. I expected it to be. <laughs> I I have anticipated my terribleness. Yeah. I think with art is like the same thing, man, and uh, it's good to surround your, your 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 yourself with positive people because um, I I don't know I'm lucky because my parents were supportive. Uh, oh, that's really good. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were very supportive. Thank God. But I, I, I know so many people that you can, you can tell that they could be a lot better, uh, and they just lack a lot of confidence. I'm, I'm saying, I'm, I'm just saying that because you said about that about, like his dad uh, maybe is not the most positive person for him, and I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's important, man. It's it important is. To be yeah, his heart's in the right place. It's in the right place, but it's just like it's clearly misguided. And, yeah, but it's uh, not helping. Yeah, it's not. And so, so you know, um, you know, not to talk too much about this, but like my yeah. point, my point is, is that you know, like I, I really am. I live what I preach. You know, I tell you guys, you know, practice, practice, practice. You know, um, I mean it. You know, and, and I don't have any illusions about. Like I have no disillusions or illusions that if you just put in the time and effort you'll you'll get in there and i i'm also divorcing myself from using words like working really hard like work hard because i also think that's actually detrimental i believe that there is an like there's there is too little of work right like if you don't do enough work that is detrimental right but there's also doing too much work right which is also detrimental detrimental to your health and maybe to your social life and your personal life, right? If you're always working and you're doing stuff, that's what happened to me, right? Where I started, like, I, I don't remember my daughter being three years old because I was just working like a freaking racehorse, you know? And that really breaks my heart. Uh, someone once told me, uh, I, I think it's, either I heard this from somebody or I heard this in a podcast or a book. Uh, either way, I heard this and then it, it hit me really hard, which was, you know, you you can you can either be really amazing at your career right or you can be really amazing as, of being a father or husband or wife uh and mother right but you can't have both you can't be amazing at both does it make sense yeah. So the more amazing you are in your career, perhaps your family and life is suffering for it, and vice versa. The more you put into your life, the more your 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 craft will suffer for it. And I decided that it's been long enough. I've worked hard enough. I don't need to work hard anymore. I should stop. And anything that I want to become really good at, I'll be more patient with. Because before I wasn't patient. You know, I was trying to get things over with. And I was like, well, one day I'll be able to do this. One day, one day, one day, one day. And no, those days never came. You get it? It just got worse. I just got work, more work and more work and more work and more work. And it started really, you know, affecting me negatively. Um, I see this a lot with my friends that are also very accomplished, you know. I see this with other accomplished and successful people, you know. And so uh, I re I redefine success for my life, and success for me is that at the end of the day, am I happy? No. You know, not am I happy? Am I going to be happy in two weeks from now? Am I happy by what happened today? You know, especially after my surgery, I uh, I could have died, right? And so I'm like, yeah, you know, who cares if I'm like this well known concept artist if I just die? <laughs> You know, yeah. I'd rather see yeah. my daughter and sons grow up and get married and have kids and have their own, like, sex, success in, in the way that I see it, you know, um, than just being dead or just being a workhorse. Like, I look yeah. at my dad. My dad has been working his whole life, and he's tired of working, and I'm like, that sucks, father, <laughs> you know? And... Yeah. uh I think it's just like the same thing is happening to me or was, was happening to me. But last a year and a half ago now, I think it was in the middle of like 2015. I started to change this perspective and uh, I'm now on the right track. I feel way happier these days. And after the surgery, I'm even better. Okay. And there's things that, you know, life still sucks. Like life still throws hard balls. It's not like I'm going to be cured from this forever. But uh, I'm, I'm a much heavier place. I'm back to kind of where I was at. And I, I encourage this for all of you guys. So when you guys are working really hard, consider why you're working so hard, you know. And if they're, if you're doing it and you think this is temporary, then truly say that and truly mean it, okay? You know, give yourself a, a set time frame that you really want to, like, reevaluate 
your life goals? Like if every year, maybe at the end of every year, say, okay, is everything that I'm doing putting me on track to what I really care about? No? Okay, then what can I do differently? You know? So you like you like the philosophy work smarter, not harder? Yeah, oh, absolutely. And I think that's possible more and more these days than it was in the past, you know? Yeah. Uh, I actually had some students. I had a student in uh, like a three or four months ago. He was re- He's like a freaking hard hardcore worker he works really hard and he was doing 12 hour days and i was like dude like your homework assignment like i already know you're gonna do the homework so your homework assignment is instead of doing 12 hour work days why don't you bring it down to 10 you know do this just as much as you've been doing before but now you have 10 hours to do it and he's like what and i was like yeah just try it he's like oh, okay he said like, but i want to put as much time and effort as i can i was like i know but just put 10 hours and he did, and he did just as much work, and it was just as good. And he's like, oh, man, this is actually better. He's like, it was nice to have those extra two hours. I was like, right? I was like, now your homework for next week is bringing it down to eight hours, <laughs> right? And he's like, what? And I was like, seriously, try. And he's like, okay. And he did that. Uh, and then when next week rolled around, he's like, I was like, did you bring it down to eight? He's like, I brought it down to six. And I was like, whoa. Oh. And he's like, yeah, he's like, I realized that I was getting too distracted too often. And I also realized that if I just laser focus like an hour or two, like I didn't have any distraction, I turned off this or that, <clears throat> you know, I timed myself and I stay super focused for like an hour and I think like took a 30 minute break and then focus for an hour and then like took a 30 minute break that I was able to get all the stuff done in six hours. And I was like, wow. And he's like, yeah, he's like, thanks, man, that really helps. And he's like, now I don't work as hard, and I can actually do other stuff. And I'm like, yeah, right? And he's like, you, if you really are efficient, and like I said, it doesn't have to happen overnight. Like I said, minor changes, right? I didn't tell him, do six hours, right? I said, 10 hours, like shave off two hours, you know, and spend the whole week trying to do that. You know, so in the beginning of the week, if you're still at like 11 hours, don't, don't be, beat yourself over it, right? Yeah. You know, and if he, let's say he was barely making 10 hours, on the following week, I said, let's try it again for another week, you know? I wouldn't have suggested him to move on until I felt like he was already doing it on his own, you know? Yeah. Um, some people take longer. Like, if it would have taken him the whole month to just master the 10-hour work work day, you know, so be it. But it, for him, it happened to take him just a week every time, okay? He was really devoted. He was really focused on taking my advice seriously. And it worked out for him, and I'm very happy that it did. You know, cool. Uh, same here. Like I'm at like a f- like five to six hour work day too. You know, so it's really nice because I can do stuff. Um, yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> yeah, now it's difficult, man. I'm doing a lot now, and I'm going a little bit crazy. But it's it's actually honestly doing a lot good for me at the moment. I'll change it, like you said, it's temporary. But at the moment, I'm just like just painting only that and it's really helping me yeah yeah, yeah like uh, consider it like well whatever you're doing right now why, why don't you try like let's say you spend 10 hours i don't know how long you're taking right but let's just let's make an arbitrary yeah. number like why don't you just take a number that you think you would rather have that's shaved off about an hour or half an hour right don't shave off mm. a lot of time shave off like a little bit of time and then just try to do it and then a lot of time and then uh, check in with me next week. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, but, definitely, it's gonna, it's gonna work with with the sketches, man. That again, like I know you said, don't say sorry, but I just don't want you to think like it's really not that I don't care or anything. I, I honestly, it was not possible for me to. to oh, to, I already, I already told you, you don't have to apologize. Like, yeah, only yeah, time yeah. will tell. So don't worry about it. Yeah, you're good. All right, all right, guys. I'm gonna stop the class here. Thanks for okay. submitting great work. You guys are awesome. I appreciate y'all. You guys kick butt, so keep kicking butt, and then uh, you know, like, like I said, you know, keep working hard, keep focusing. Oh, <laughs> I just told you guys not to, but like, keep working, right, and consistently, and you know, have that resilience, have that like patience, and work with one another, talk to each other often, use the Discord to your advantage, you know. Uh, if you feel stuck, you know, talk to your peers; they'll help you out. You know, they'll give you insight that you didn't consider before. So, with that. Peace out, friends. Talk to you guys next week. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, man. Yeah. Laters. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. 
Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.